and was so driven by getting on that show. It's weird how when you put that much effort into something and it happens, but there's a cost to it. I risk my life. How's it over there? How's that Thousand Oaks? Nice. It's okay. Quiet. It's, you know, it's everybody's the same. You know, it's it's interesting. Like you can't really add to anybody's thoughts. Yeah. You know, it's like what you're doing, we're doing. Right. It's, it's kind of interesting. You know, there's like no new information that we could even help with each right. other. Like, hey, do this, and you could. Oh, you know, I found those. this is really good. Yeah. Right. Yeah. It's <laughs> like. You're yeah. waiting, you're being careful, like when you go to the grocery store, um, right. that, is there, is there Santa wipes, Santa wipes, and right. is there toilet paper and things, okay, you know, and everybody's like, okay, you get two, two maps, and you're just like, oh my God. Universal. Yeah, it's universal. It's, weird. it's very interesting, we're all on the same plane, you know, um, and oddly, this would be the time that we would need entertainment more than ever. Right. But that's why I think if you notice, there's so many people that are just like reaching out through, you know, these platforms like Zoom specifically, yeah. um, doing shows, doing events, wanting to somehow bring that value that is needed right now to people. Um, and, it, and the most amazing thing is like, can you imagine Zoom? I mean, not to, not to be uh, insensitive, but like Zoom is like, this is the best thing that could have happened for them. <laughs> Oh, there's definitely, well, there definitely are businesses that have been, you know, growing yeah. because of this, so. Right. I mean, I'm on Zoom every night because I'm doing shows. I don't know if I told you this or you, 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 you heard. I'm doing, um, for, I'm turning 30. TC, man, I'm getting up there. I'm turning 35. Wow. This weekend. That's That's you, yeah, but you've known me since I was 18. Yeah. You know, you've known me since I was 18. 20 years almost, 20 did. years now, close to 20 years. Yeah. yeah. I was just thinking about I was just thinking about that. I said, wow, I first met you at, at, at San Francisco. Right. The Joe Pons lecture workshop we did. Right. And then I saw you and you did your act. I mean, you had a fan and I still remember part of the act. And I don't remember exactly what you did, but I always remember the feeling I had like, oh, wow, this kid. I even said, I think I said to you, keep doing what you're doing. I have that Stuff VHS, like that. man. You do? Uh-huh. Wow. Absolutely. I just, um, <clears throat> there's the it factor. I think I said that. I think you said you have the it factor because, you know, it doesn't matter exactly what you're doing, but what you're doing is the way to do it, you know? You know what? Actually, I'll tell you something. And maybe I'll throw in a, a quick uh, a, a throwback video in this. I was doing, at the end of my Dove Act, this huge card fan. And I would do the card manipulation, yeah. and I'd do <clears throat> card fans, and then these huge card fans that were like as big as my chest. I remember that, yeah. And you said, and this was such a lesson to me, you said to me at the end of it, you said, um, you don't need this. And I kind of thought, yeah, but these are big and I made them and, you know, these are cool, like no one does this because they're so big. And you just said, you're better than this. Mm you're better than this. He goes, mm -hmm. and you told me a story. You said you had the same thing. You were doing like two card, card castles. Yes. Card castles. I love them because I made it myself too. You know, it's right. Because you're, you're attached to it and said you, you had the thing and you did two card castles and, and <clears throat> was it, was it Billy Andrews? Was it your mentor? Yeah. Your mentor said to you, you're better than this, Tony. Yeah. And yeah. then you take him out and, and you told me that you go, you're better than this. Yeah. And I took it out and it was a good change. Yeah, I mean, those are the hard changes too, the ones that you like. Yeah. The change. But if you're open to listening, that's the hard part with artists. Sometimes we're so in our worlds that it's hard to get information from other people, you know. Well, you you're attached. You know. Yeah, and you're attached to your own biases because of your yeah. ideas, right? Yeah. Yeah. But, I mean, another thing that I always le I learned from you was, you know, give people new information. And even if it's, um, you know, a little confetti <laughs> thing here that's not even necessarily a magic trick, but it's some kind of flash. It's some stimulation that yeah. people, whoa, whoa. And you're always constantly giving them new information. Then they're going to be engaged. Yes. That's, I think, more than ever. When I wrote my 15-second theory, 15-second secret, I call it now, yeah. like eight years ago. I think we're down to like seven or eight seconds now. Right. I have that too, yeah. Yeah, you, it's, it's, you know, it's, 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 it's creating the flow of energy and not keeping the audience, not, you know, keeping them on their toes in a, in a slight way. It doesn't have to be dramatic every second. Right. But even little things, like you said, 
asking a question, breaking the fourth wall, going into the audience, going from the left side of the stage, going to the right side of the stage, change your jacket, this stuff, all you do, I'm just thinking about your show. <laughs> you know, take your jacket off, uh, you know, a little sentimental trick, a funny trick, uh, scary, uh, dangerous, you know, water, whoa, body showing. I mean, it's all, woo, it's yeah. great, you know. I. I prefer that. I mean, I've seen guys in, in the recent years doing small shows with basically deck of cards, which is fine. Great magic. I'm old school. I like variety. Right. I like variety. That's what it is, you know. And not frantic. I don't like frantic variety. I don't like it like too crazy. Yeah. I think just the, the pacing is important too, which which you also do very well. Very well, the pacing. well, you can have a variety of moments in the show, but I don't like repeating. In, a, in my full show, repeating plots, right? right? So like, if you're going to make something float in the air, you make it float in the air and you do that one time. Then if right. you're going to do an escape, you do one escape. Mm -hmm. And so like, I used to do that, the handcuff, the shackle routine <laughs> out and did it in the audience. I would do it on stage. And he, to your point, you're the one in, in rehearsal before we opened in Tahoe, you said, you know what? too much on stage, too, we gotta get in the audience. Yeah. So I did it in the audience. It worked great. Yeah, yeah, and it was just, it, doing yeah. that routine in the audience, not on stage was huge. People yeah. loved it, it turned into a really great routine and now it's a, a piece that I do um, that is very, very um, successful and, and has high impact. And so the thing is, is that once I was like, I'm gonna do the water escape, mm. I have to pull that oh. routine, no matter how good that routine is. Because I know, that's a tough one. That's, that's a tough, tough one. one. But that's a know, tough so choice. I would, never, I would never do both yeah. in the same show. Yeah, and because it, you have to, it shows that you're good with, with locks fast. Yeah. So you're in the water, you're good with locks fast. Yeah, yeah, and what's the, what's the, where's the drama there, so. Yeah, that's smart. It's, it's, that's a hard choice. That's but a hard choice. It's a choice. really hard choice. So, and that's why I think like when you see a lot of, um, and not to pick on close-up magicians because I'm, I'm doing close-up shows right now um, via Zoom. You know, I'm doing routines where I'm just sitting at the table and in the right. form. It's hard to not duplicate plots. There's a lot of assembly routines. Oh my gosh, TC. I'm, so, so one of the things I'm doing, I'm doing 35 shows in 35 days, 35 wow. different, different shows. Wow. So it's like four to five different tricks every night. And there's a lot of similar plots. So like if I do, you know, an assembly routine, right. well, the next day I can't do like a matrix. Right. Even if it's a coin to a card, it's the same wow. plot. <sighs> Coins across, yeah, yeah. cards across, you yeah. can't same plots and so yeah. you know i have to spread them out over days so like last week i did a coins of glass and then today i'll do or last night i did more of like a three fly but you mm. have to spread them out you can't just do them yeah well, and That's i feel cool. a lot of i feel a lot of close-up magic though you can run into that trap and illusions and illusions too and illusions yeah too. yeah i mean it, it's it's it, there's so many only so many circumstances and, and events you could have with magic right it's like but then it comes down to personality then carries right. it. But so if you don't overdo it with the repet repetition, I mean, it's producing, doing shows with a lot of people. That's a problem too. It's like a variety of people on the stage. Right. You know, it's like, I like that. Don't do the rope trick. He's doing, you know, but it's hard right. because there's only yeah. so much you could do. So but then hard. again, I feel like if you have a strong personality, I think that will shine too. You know, that's gotta be a major factor. Your personality is the different factor. You know. you know, here's an interesting thought and a concept that that I think actually I learned and talked about this a lot with Jim, but I'm sure that we've talked about this too, <laughs> is, you know, the best marriage between in a show and between a performer and his material is you want the performer to be just better than the material, right? Because mm. if, if, the, if, the, if the material that you're doing, the magic tricks are better than the magician, what happens is, is, oh, the tricks are great, but he's not very good. People begin to think, especially with magic, it's, well, if I had that trick, if I had that deck of cards, I could do it. If I have that box, I could do it, right? Mm. And that's when that, that dynamic is, is, is gapped. If it's the other way, it's like, boy, I really like that guy, but he kind of just did this one little dumb trick. I like yeah. him, though. I like him a lot. And it's like, yeah. that's almost a better place to be, but... You want to be that, have that personality, right. but you want your material to be yeah. so good, but yeah. you're just 
slightly better than the material. Yeah, so people yeah. Just are just wow, this guy is amazing. Um, well rounded, you know, being yeah. well rounded. Yeah, that's the key. I think I always talk about like a table with only three legs. You know, it'll hold up for a while, but then it falls. So if you have the fourth strong leg, you know, the personality of the show right. that keeps you the table from flopping. You know, yeah, I'm gonna show you this. I have this right on my uh, my library my shelf right here. Now this is gonna be a throwback for you. It uh -oh. is Thursday. <clears throat> throwback for you. Let me look closely. <laughs> Um, I haven't framed this yet. I'm going to frame it, but uh, Oof. And you signed that for me. I had this magazine for years and then year uh, it come out? together you signed it for me. What, the, what year did it come out? This is Mum right. Magazine, November 1996. <laughs> You so, this, <laughs> so this, and then, I mean, the most amazing thing, so this was about your show, and they did a review of your show. Yeah, the because nice photos in there. Uh, oh, it's great. Look at that young yeah. Tony Clark. Look at that guy. He's stud. Look at that guy. Man. Different life, man. Different life. <laughs> different life. And then, uh, and then this one. Oh, my God. This is the cover to the VHS. I have the VHS. Oh, my God. Yeah. Um, there he is. This this was, I would say, one of the most truly, 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 one of the most helpful and, geez, just, just learning, learning tools. Tell, tell me why, because I'll tell you I'll something. I'll tell you why. You, you, I, I know why, in a way, because you're a working pro. You understand what the value is, of not no. just tricks and buying gimmicks and blah, blah, blah. But for me, like when I wrote even my book, Insider Secrets, and that video, those are not my best sellers. And I didn't do it for that reason anyway. But they're nowhere as close to being my best sellers. So why do you think that video helped this, you? This right, here, this right here. First of all, um, that's on download now. It's not a video anymore. It's a download. So, First yeah. of all, the, the, the biggest um, learning tools as far as like say videos at the time was right. behind the scenes, mm -hmm. which um, I had on VHS. And I remember seeing you at a magic convention after I had won Lance Burton Award. And yeah. I, wanted, I won you know, national contests with my Dove Act. And I remember we were at, I think we were at PCAM and you had a booth and people walking by and you had behind the scenes. And I just said, this is all you need. Like literally, you yeah. don't, I know there's books and there's a lot of information out right. there. Truly, truly, this is all you need. Just this one video. That's it. You can now, you know, there's a lot and I had a lot, but whatever. So that one, but this was, I would say even better. Um, and there's no tricks. You don't teach one trick. Not one. This is not about teaching any magic tricks. Uh, the reason why it was the most valuable tool um, for someone who became an inter a professional entertainer, a professional magician, right. working, performing, doing shows, right. was because it was the only video. And I would say, even now, I can't think of one. Well, no, it's a little bit different now. No. Slightly different because. Um, well, let me, let me finish because this is the only video that showed you a actual live performance and show, and you could see the transitions. You can see right. how you had a table, how you moved, what a curtain would come in, people exiting and you saw right. a show mm -hmm. and you go, Oh, that's what it's supposed to look like. Mm -hmm. You know, because for me, I never saw a lot of shows growing up. You know, I never saw, I saw one magic show and then every other magic show, I saw one magic show when I was a kid and every other magic show I saw since was after I was already doing shows. Wow, okay. So, so this was I, early, you were, how young were you then when you saw that first video, the stage to stage? Uh, I would have been in my teens. So you weren't, you were just doing it like weekend parties and stuff at that point? I was doing library shows. Not professional, right? <clears throat> I, I mean, it was professional in a way that I never had another job, but it wasn't like I was a teenager. So right, right. it was like, I got, you know, I saw my first magic show when I was seven years old at a fair and I just was like, whatever. And then 
I, I, yeah, it was Terry Godfrey. It was Terry Godfrey. I saw at a fair and he was doing Miser's Dream and I'm like, it's up his sleeve and I walked out. And so then when I was a teenager, my dad's coworker showed me a card trick. I got into it. It became obsessive here. I went to Joe's Magic Shop right. and that's when I just got into it, into it. And then I started doing shows and, and I'm like, I don't know how to do a show. What do I do a show? And Joe was like, well, you know, you, you know, you do this routine and this routine and this routine. And I'm like, okay, but well, I need a table. What do I, so I had a TV tray was my table for years because I didn't know. I just, and I had a, uh, I had a, um, a carry on a black carry on suitcase that all my stuff was in. So I came in with a TV tray and a black carry on suitcase and I put it in people's homes. Right. Wow. I didn't know there were magic tables that were good for props. And right, right. I, I didn't know that. I just didn't wow. get it. And so when I'm starting to do shows, people are booking me, you know, watching that VHS and that video of a real show of a real magician. And it wasn't about the tricks. It was about the flow. It was about the, the, the look. It was right. about everything that matters in a real production and a real show. Because when you did, a lot of the instructional uh, trick videos, right. they'll show you a trick right. in front of a live audience, then they cut and they teach you how to do it. Right. And then they cut and they right. teach you a trick. And yeah, so you, where's the flow? You don't, you don't see the integration of the routines. Right? Yeah, how do they flow? How do you go back and forth? And, and beyond just, especially card tricks. Wow. So that was invaluable. And now true. the EMC, the Luis D'Amato's videos are really well produced. And he does have a, he films a show, but he also cuts it. Wow. So there's cuts there. So it's like, it's a real show. And you right. can imagine that, oh, he just cut there to distinguish between the tricks. But there's not a, a true flow where it's uncut performance. Right, right. Because you don't know what may happen and what it is. Right. Well, anyway. I think the flow is also the key too. like, you're smart, you understand it. People don't get that. It's like, what does the flow mean? It's like, you don't just have a dead stop. Sometimes you do, but not all the time. Can't be just pick it up, do it, pick it up, do it. It's, there's gotta be a, a flow, two or three pieces that flow together. That's important for an audience too. Cause they don't want to get that choppy feeling, you know, that's when you lose them. Any dead air, they're gone, bang, they're gone, they're gone, they're gone. Well, I always said that the difference between a good show and a great show are the transitions. Yeah, right. definitely, 100%. That's, uh, I, that's, that's the main thing, yeah. Because a good show is like, wow, it's really good, but the great show makes it flow so seamless that you're just like, wow, yeah. I don't even... And know, it shouldn't be noticed, you know. Right. It's almost like you look at, oh, geez, it's like... Right. 40 right. minutes went by, yeah. Totally, yeah. Yeah, that's, that's why. There's no, like, mental breaks. It's a constant engagement, yeah. Subtle, but there yeah smart good well you you had a futuristic thought in your mind watching that with uh, the intention of using and being that that's the difference did i ever tell you i've told you this um when i was when teenagers we must have been 18 19 years old i don't think i was even 20 yet but um feral and i were buds and we were somewhere and we were talking, I don't remember where we were, whether we were at a convention or something. And he says to me, he goes, he looks at me, he goes, you want to be Tony Clark? And he, Farrell says that straight to me, he goes, you want to be Tony Clark? And I look at him, I go, the guy's had an amazing career. He won, you know, gold medal. He had his own show. He's right. done these TV stunts. He's right. produced own shows. Like, yeah, why, why not? And, uh, and it's funny because, you know, when you're a kid, you know, in your teens, early 20s, that's, that's you know, it's so far away, removed of that thought of like, right. that when we're going to work together years later, how amazing that was. And, and for right. me, and so it was, that's why I invited you. You're one of the only people I invited when I was on tour with Disney. I would invite you to that show. Yeah, that's great. You and uh, to- hey, it's, uh, fun. You know, all that. it's fun to watch people you know as old as i get i'm getting older i see these young guys not many you're one of the few that you see just uh it's fun to watch it like you know cool you know it's nice it's really nice that's that's life man you gotta kind of give back and let the let the future go you know it's like ah, so it's nice and you got a great family which is nice too yeah that always helps. so um 
So you've worked with a lot of celebrities on different movies and TV shows, yeah. things like this. Uh, anything come to mind where you're like, oh, we set this up, it was gonna be amazing, and it just didn't turn out the way you wanted it to? Well, the uh, majority of the time, Yeah. if you preface it first, sure. majority of the time when you're working with the pro actors, right. they're on it. Right. Like the last, I did Ted Danson, the last, uh, one of the last things I just did, uh, two, two gigs ago, Ted Danson for uh, uh, The Good Place. And he was, he wanted to do it right. He was so like, I'm like, Ted, he's like, no, no, I don't. he was so concerned. He wanted to do it right. You yeah. sure this looks good? I'm like, Ted, they're not going to, they're only going to show the good ones, you know. Um, but he was, he was concerned and he wanted it and he cared. And obviously his career shows that. Yeah, you know? right. He's been, I mean, God, he's been on TV for 40 years. You right. Know, it's like how long right. has he been on TV? Consistently. So there's no secret to that. Yeah. That's what's cool about when I meet these people. Like, oh, I get it. This guy is so, everything he's done, he really cares about it. Right. It's a great lesson, right? And it's just, it could be the guy, oh, I'm Ted Danson, I can do what I want. No, no. He, I mean, he literally, like, I was almost laughing, like, Jesus Christ, this guy's like a legend. And he's so nervous. And he's like, you sure it looks good? I mean, so it's great. Cut to, Years before, working with uh, an actor, um, I don't know if I should mention his name. I mean, it's not bad, but pretty big actor okay. in a movie. So we rehearsed like a week or two before. I can't remember, about a week or two at a, at a production office. I showed him this thing. He's got a silk thing. He produces a dove. Kane vanishes. Not that much crazy stuff. Production from a silk with a, you know, with a, with a piece of flash paper production. So I said, okay, here's a set for you. That way you can work on it. Right. Um, when we meet it back on set in two weeks, whatever, we'll go. Perfect. Give him a little kit. I name him a little box. Boom. We get to the shoot. He hadn't even opened it. No, he doesn't even have it. But thankfully, in my head, I'm like, it's been a while. I'm sure you could, I could tell, like, it's not his main thing. Imagine, you know, he doesn't give a crap about it. I mean, he probably care, but not really. So I had a duplicates of everything. Good. But dude, when I went like looking around, like, I don't see anything. He never touched it. So it was really like reteaching him for it. And he, you know, he pulled it off. He's not, you know, he's, he's could have been better, right. but right. he pulled it off. It's right. fine. And, and that's the good thing about not live, you know, right. you could cut, get it to right. look like. Right, exactly. But it was, to me, it was easy enough. I mean, that's the key is too, and you know, you know how it is, you work with people, you know, it worked with Taylor Swift. You want to simplify it as much as possible because they're not going to have the leisure that we have to sit in a room for three right. weeks and yeah, you know, I would practice cards, you know. Right. I was actually just thinking about that as you were telling that story about when 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 we did Taylor. So, you know, I remember saying I was doing something. I said I don't have time to work on this. Like TC, like you know, hey, here here's what here's what we want to do, and you're like, yeah. got it, and you were crazy about making this rose i have the rose right here and uh yeah ah, want to see it <laughs> i still have it wow oh actually this remember this i found oh. a use for these uh these uh Dude, all that was for the floating rose there. the floating rose idea i think wasn't it hey man that's a that was a, that was a floating rose idea and then look at this one this one uh was from the tv show we did with uh wizard wars remember uh wizard wars yeah wizard wars yeah man look for those of you who don't know, Tony Clark makes everything for me. <laughs> well, um, it's fun. It's fun. I mean, remember that day we were at the, my... Uh, well, my, yeah, my with, with Taylor. So, so what ended up happening is when we got there, you know, there was so much going on. And there's like, what, 20 plus, 20 dancers, let's say. Then you have oh, yeah. her crew and the choreographer and all this. And we're there. And, and we're a piece of the whole production, right? Yeah. And... Um, right. And what happens is, is you know, I, I'm there kind of trying to explain to her, saying, hey, look, this is what it is. It's, you need to be careful of this and that. Yeah, yeah. And you could see that she's not really paying attention to it because and not, and that's no knock at her. That's just because she had so much going on. And then at one point, they're like, oh, you know, it's not working. And I remember, you know, you kind of troubleshooting it. And, and basically what we relayed to the team is saying, yeah, good. We don't want it to work right now because it's rehearsals. We don't, we don't want it to work. 
We want right. to troubleshoot everything so it does work because they're like, well, it doesn't work. How come it doesn't work? And it's like, right. well, the show's on for this weekend. You know, it's Monday. Right. And so that kind of, because they're like, what? You know, and it's like, well, let us troubleshoot this. And that's, I think that calmed them down, but it was also a weird thing saying to them, I don't want it to work right now. They're like, uh, what, you don't? No, right. because I want right. to fix all the reasons why it doesn't. So that way, right. when it comes to show, it's set. Right. And then you went home and you're tweaked it every night, came back the next yeah. day. I'm like, hey, what's yeah. the changes? How is it doing? And yeah, it was a lot of work. It was more work than people ever imagined. It was an air thing. It yeah. was the air. Remember the movement helped. Right. The oxygen got in. It was uh, the fumes were overpowering and eliminating all the oxygen from that little right. capsule. So by her just waving it once, it opened the air and then it worked. Yeah, it worked. And so eventually, you know, what ends up happening is as she's doing this, I told the, um, the, the, the production team, I said, you know what? Everything looks good, but we really kind of need to drill this over and over again just so she's comfortable with it so it's second nature right. so that way when she does it in show she's yeah. not like oh i wonder what's happening like she's not familiar with these yeah. props and so they're like okay so they everybody laughed and it was just um you know taylor hey, and chris and good Peter. example of her being why she's successful right oh she was she dead on it she didn't hesitate she nope. didn't hesitate she took it not afraid of the fire yeah did it what do i need to do she right. was like very like bang and like oh then you go. That's, that's exactly why. right. Exactly. And so that's why she's where she, she is. Like she was, she was focused and then she was, she was driven with it and she wasn't, yeah, she wasn't afraid of the fire. It's like, all right, this is fire. It's going to be in your hand. And she's like, okay, like I'm good. But the whole situation was smart because you propelled it. You knew you were realistic in your mind knowing I'm not going to be able to make this. A lot of guys take gigs and they're like, uh, but you brought me in, which is great. I made the thing. Right. I stepped back from a distance, knowing that was your position, respecting that that was important too. You were the contact. I'm here looking, like hovering to kind of see, but not too much. It no, was good. Not confusion it was in there. good. Yeah, because man, I, I don't know what I was doing. I think I was, I was getting ready for. You were in and out of town or something. I your was, schedule I, was kind of crazy. Yeah, I was doing another, yeah. maybe another TV show. Um, I was on tour. I was doing something. And yeah, I, you were in the middle of like two things. I was in the two things and they said, oh, when is this? They're like in two weeks. And that's why as soon as I left that meeting, I, I called you and I was like, I'm not going to have the time to do this. Yeah. You know, this is what we want to do. And, and, and we did it and it worked. And then the best thing is, let me tell you, then when we got to the um, um, LA Live, it was like the Nokia set, wherever we were filming. Right. You know how in those big, those venues are, the air cons on oh, yeah. and I'm like, Oh my gosh, it's going to light. And this air is going to blow the flame out. I saw and, that on TV. Like, see the, 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 yeah, you see it going. And I was like, Oh no. So in rehearsals, um, I knew the production manager actually, uh, or the set designer because the set designer worked on Ringling with me. Oh, a small world. Yeah. Man. Such a small world. So I went up to the set designer and he's with the director. And I was like, hey, what's up, man? He's like, oh my gosh, Alex, how you doing? Um, yeah, Joe Stewart. So Joe, Joe was there and he was like, hey, so I'm sitting with the director and it was really nice to have that little bit of, he goes, so what's this flame? I go, oh, we did the Flaming Rose with Taylor. He's like, oh yeah, okay, yeah, we'll make sure. What do you need? And so it was so nice to have somebody on your side. Yeah. And so then on the day, I was the last one I gave the flaming rose to Taylor right before the performance. And then she flew up in the air in this table. That's it. And now they, you're holding your breath. <laughs> I hold my breath. And I told the, the crew there, cause like you need to clear the floor. And I just stood there and I said, I told them, I said, I'm the last person to come off the stage. Everybody clear, make sure everybody's clear. And then when you tell me go, it's because we're going live right now and I'll be off stage, but I'm the last person off. And he's like, okay. Cause he was with Taylor is with Taylor Swift. So everybody cleared and I'm sitting right, standing right next to Taylor. And you know, they're like, okay, here we go. And he looks at me, he's like, let's go. I'm like, Taylor. And she's like, thank you. I go, you're amazing. And she's like, oh my gosh. I said, you know, good luck. You're going to kill it. You're going to be amazing. And uh, you know, yeah. have a great performance. And she was like, thank you. Let's get a photo. And so boom, I walk across the stage and I'm watching this thing. And all I'm thinking about is this early in the routine. Light, light, as she grabs this, light, yeah, light. as she grabs this, this flower, this rose, and the rose lights, I see a little bit of a flicker of a, of a, of a flame, and I just went, yeah! 
<laughs> yeah, I was watching from TV going. <sighs> yeah, and so and so then what happens is we um the person backstage they looked at me and they, they someone says did you was that you and I go yeah that's mine they go oh my gosh how scary is that I go yeah I can't do anything you know can go and, out there and light it and leave <laughs> yeah right and so basically the black tarp. <laughs> 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 and then right afterwards, Taylor went off stage and we went to her dressing room and she's like, I want to see it. I want to see the performance. And, uh, and then it shows you like the, the impact that this had. Because it was on the, uh, for those of you listening, the American Music Awards 2014, I believe. Wow. 2014. Was it that and far back? Space. Yeah, because it was a 1989 album. Wow. So Blank Space is her performance of Blank Space and we uh, created the Flaming Rose. And... Um, and afterwards, we were in her dressing room. It was me, her, Selena Gomez, and you know, uh, yeah. I think Carly Kloss and Melissa, who is the uh, the choreographer. And we all watched this, and she made crazy eyes when she did the flame, and that became the poster image of the entire award show. I know. I it's saw the pictures of her. Hey, yeah. don't forget to mention that she wasn't afraid of uh, that fickle fire, which a lot of people are afraid of that fickle fire. Right. Yeah. In her the hand. Rose is different. Is here, but the fickle, yeah. she had it in, in her, her hand. hand. Yeah. And she didn't, she never blinked. Cause sometimes, you know, you never know. Oh, oh shit. Whoa. Yeah. I don't want to do it. But she was like, but it's a good example. Like we just talked about and, and she cared enough to want to watch it immediately. Yeah. Oh and yeah. Really she, consistent and she goes, I want to see it. I want to see yeah, it. Yeah. That's the consistency of it. That's a good lesson for everybody listening. Yeah. It's like caring about what you do before, during and after. Right. That's the moment. And after yeah. and after. So that's, 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 we all were, you know, it's a great, great experience. That was a great experience. So yeah, that was fun. Thanks again. Uh, Thanks again for bringing me on that. That's great. Yeah, no, man, it was great. Um, always like, you know, well, even like I said, with that other TV show with the guitar, it was, I think it's important to know your, I don't like the word necessary limitations because I believe that people, um, you know, I don't have any limitations psychologically. It's like, I can do anything, right. but at the same time, the reality of, Am I able to deliver, you know, in the time that I need to the deliver? Time. And, I, and I couldn't. So I said, nope, let's outsource this. This is what we, this yeah. is what has to happen. And, uh, and I'm glad I did because you did a fantastic job. And Yeah, well, that's the same way, you know, when you came for the Wizard Wars, we came to the garage. Yeah. And we hammered out a lot of stuff. I mean, we had that one good idea that we never used that would have been cool, too, with the, the beanbag bean thing. Bags? I know. But, but it was a cool energy. I think we worked for like eight hours. Oh, we were there all day. I, I, mean, I mean, it went like this, but it was cool because it was like, right. you know what I mean? When you both are trying to accomplish the same thing, that's the key about team building. If you accomplish yeah. it, if everybody wants truly to make it good and everybody's putting in their energy together, it just, it happens, man. Hey, I have a question. Do you think, so when you're creating magic and you're, and you're developing ideas and routines and things, do you find that like a time constraint is helpful? Meaning that, hey, we got to get this done. It's like cramming before the test, right? It's like, hey, we're doing this tomorrow. We have to get this done. And you're just like, uh, okay, boom. And you knock it out and it's great right away? Or is it like, yeah. no, I'd rather have the time to work it out. I mean, that's always nice and a, a great luxury. But sometimes, you know what I'm saying? Yeah, a lot of the time when you're doing the film and TV stuff, like when I worked on the pilot for NBC last year, it was a, not a big schedule. You know, it was a short schedule as a pilot. Yeah. And they came, they changed the script all the time because they were yeah. trying to get it, you know. So yeah. I'm making like, you know, I made three fountains of silks. And I'll, they scrapped it. I'm like, oh my God, I just, you know. <laughs> so 36 silks or more was like 40 silks. So you know, I was like, but you know, you just have to let it go, right? Right. They wanted this monkey to appear out of this goblet. I'm like, can you do it? Like, <laughs> wait a second, wait a second. Let's just let's just take stuffed that. Monkey, a stuffed monkey, not a real monkey. Oh, okay, okay. <laughs> okay, okay. I was like, wait a second. You, you just kind of, we're not going to just pretend you didn't say that. Right. <laughs> they wanted a monkey to yeah. come out of it's, the it's those, those stuffed monkeys that you put around your neck with the long yeah. legs. Yeah, I got it. It was, a, it was a kid show scene. So this magician was going to pull these, this monkey. And uh, I'm thinking about it, and they go, really, is there a way to make that work, to make this monkey appear? I'm like, oh, I gotta think about it, you know? But now I'm like thinking, like, you got 40 people waiting on you. I mean, the whole production team. So I went to my office, and I, 
yeah, I got it. I think I could get it. So the prop guy there was cool. He had a guy to help cut back hole in the back. Mm. And I came up with a dual perception. I put these fake ears of the monkey in the thing to start it out here, like it's stuck in there. And as I came forward, I came in and pulled out the full monkey from the back, from like a back. Right. And it worked great. And because like, they think that it's out here, away. Right. So you started here, because at first I'm like, oh, then, no, no. I said, I'm going to put something in there. I put an elastic on there, and I'm like drilling and screwing, and I'm cutting up my sewing machine. I'll make it stop. But again, the time element, right? So I put the ears in there, and the first thing I start, I pulled here, and they look at me like I, I did a demo for them, you know. I brought a big jacket. She was wearing like a cloak. So I brought a big jacket to kind of pull it off, I made a little tube here. And I do this, and I pull it out, and it kind of fooled them because they saw the ears here. They thought it was the same one. But anyway, the point is, it worked. Yeah. In the day, I think I came up with that, you know. Yeah. So it is good at certain points. I don't want, I don't want to do that all the time because it's yeah. exhausting. <laughs> I, I, I don't want, I wouldn't want to do that all the time. Yeah. But it's, 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 when it works, it's cool. You know, I, I, it's nice because I, I kind of feel confident, not because I'm, I'm good at anything that I do, but I've done it for so long. Right. I have a good place to pull from. Right. And just theories and, and, and the principles. Like, it just, if I need to pull it, it comes out, you know, right. out of a necessity, you know. So that, mind. yeah, so it, it is good. I mean, for personal goals, it's good to have a deadline. It's good right. to write it down. Otherwise, you know, like, you know, you have an opening of a show. Right. Well, you know, everything's going to be done by that day. Yeah. <laughs> you say, well, it might happen, like, you know, and dear, and it never gets really done. So definitely having a goal is good. You know what's funny about um, when you're talking about shows and opening, and this is what I find so, so bizarre. Every single opening of a show I've ever done, every single one you're always feel like you're cramming to open the doors right yeah. and it doesn't matter how much time you have right they could say you have six weeks to rehearse and load in and then like four hours before the show someone goes oh doors are in you know doors are at seven and you look around and you're like there's no way this is going to happen right you know and then uh, it happens you yeah. can have four hours to load in, set, tech, everything. And yeah. you go in there and someone goes, doors are in 30. And you go, there's no way this is going to yeah. happen. And then doors. And you, and you just yeah. go, how did this? And it's because you have everybody, hopefully, you have everybody that's in charge of their job doing yes. the support part that realizes I have to get this done by this time. This is my deadline. And it happens. And I always find that amazing that, when I've been on tour and we had um, some venues that they said, hey, you, can, you have three days to load in because of whatever. Or they said, hey, you have an extra day. If you want to come in early, you can take your time. And I always, whenever I can, and the venue says, yes, you can come in early um, and without cost. Sure, <laughs> I'll, sure. I'll, yeah, I'll come in and, and I'll say, yeah, I'll hang there and, and just take my time setting everything up and making sure everything's good. Or if it's you know, a one-off where you're loading in at noon and shows at six or seven yeah you know it's always like yeah. we had days how come we've done this in hours why when we have four days it's the same feeling you know well that's that's the experience you could only get by doing it yeah. you can't read about that because every situation is different right because you know how it is every theater you go to has a different crew a different yeah. speed a different pace yeah different technology different methods of doing things you know like, oh you can't have this guy go over here he does this job you know so you, you have to be ready for it. But the bottom line is, as you know, as long as the material is solid, right. you could go out there with just regular lighting right. and do the show, right. you're fine. And right. you can do that. You can do it, it's just give me full lights and uh, I'm gonna do the show. Sure. And the show will go off. Yeah. That's what I feel like. I, I wanna feel like I can go in and do it in an hour if I have to. Right. Not that you'll want to, but if you have to, I want to. And the show goes off, but no, okay, now let's make it nice. Let's have the lights, let's put right. the cues. Totally. And, right, but totally. that's the key. You don't want to open and not be able to. I've seen that. I've seen people that over tech their shows. I worked with people, you know, over the years, not mentioning names, but they over tech stuff. And it's like, it's a catastrophe because it's so much to do before the show. Right. And those technical elements, you know how it is. Oh, the light's not working. The board's off. The, the, the one element, something's wrong. And all of these. Uh, the timing and the, the board, you know, DMX is not connecting. Uh, 
So you gotta be careful, you know, for that. So, but always have good material, you'll be fine, you know. Yeah, I always thought the same thing too, is that I remember telling when I was doing a, um, a show with, it was a new crew, new assistant, like it was brand new. And I knew that the three people that I had working with me all felt, oh my gosh, we didn't rehearse this enough. I don't know this show. Oh my gosh. I could tell all three of them. And the truth was, is we didn't have time. It's just like, you don't have the time. Sure. For and, and when things happen, you go, Hey, look, this is what's going on. And right before as doors, could I say, Oh, this, this, this. And they knew they were just like, I'm not clear on a few things. Right. right. So doors happening. Audience is filing in. And it's like, you know, after I get ready and I'm ready to go or backstage and this is like showtime. And I just held five. I was like, I, I, we're holding five. Yeah. And, uh, and I went to the, to the crew and I just said, Hey guys, you know, I realize, I know that, um, you feel rushed and maybe we can go through everything clearly and you have questions, but I'm just letting you know now that everything will be fine. I said, my job is to go out there and entertain the audience, Right. my job. And that's right. going to happen. I said, don't worry about that. They're going to have a great time. Right. it's going to be fine take the weight off them a little bit yeah. yeah that's yeah that's me so i'm trying to take pressure off of them so sure. i say don't worry about that i said if you have a question during show just go to the back curtain go alex psst, get, get my attention even from the wings i'll walk over there i'll answer any questions you may have right and we'll continue with the show so yeah. no pressure mm -hmm. and it really i saw all of them go Oh, okay. I was like, it's, everything's fine. And how'd it go? Because I'm, show went fine. Yes, no problems. We didn't have to stop. We didn't have to ask. They had no questions. It was because they felt nervous and that was calming their nerves. So I go, yeah. look, I can do this without you guys. Sure. You guys the are better. Yeah. Yeah. You're the captain of the ship. Right. And so, and so. And That's smart. That's a good lesson too, to if you, you can literally control the energy of the full crew yeah, uh, yeah. You're, they, they follow your lead if you're like damn it ah, well yeah. because right i mean yeah. the material nervous the, yeah the material all can literally be in my case and i can just pick it out of my yeah. case and just do it myself yeah. it's a lot better when the curtain opens on the prop and someone yeah. hands me this takes this you or know yeah. so I, I can do it by myself sure but it's a lot better to have a show element where people are involved so it makes it a little less like yeah demo. that's a good lesson know it know your stuff solid man yeah no there's no uh there's no replacement for that you know yeah. so that's good that's great yeah. that's a good lesson uh but you know proof is in the pudding you know you do it and it works you know you, you think it's good but if the audience likes it you know it's good yeah it's key. i remember you telling me this story um of your of you doing you're in a show and someone said something after your act about you know oh i wish you didn't use eggs eggs yeah eggs because there are eggs on the stage was that really? and it was the doves and the do you realized that the doves oh. <laughs> remember that story yeah. Well, no, I'm asking you. Do you remember it? Now I do. <laughs> that was a long time ago. Did I? Well, the, you know, what happened was from the first Dove, from the first production. Okay. Is that what happened? I don't remember. You just told me the story, and I just remember this happening. And you're like, that there are dancers on stage, and afterwards, they're like, why would you put eggs on the... F oh, the yeah. Okay, so... <laughs> So I'm doing my, you know, my bird act, turn around, mask comes off, fire, dove, boom, produce the bird, comes back. Bird, this was like two years into the show, I think. The bird was so comfortable where it was, I'm not going to expose it, obviously, for people, but wherever it was, it was so comfortable, it laid an egg. I mean, realize how many shows I did. You know, I was doing, you know, oh, 12 you did. a week. Yeah, 1,200 shows, 22, yeah. 2,000 shows. Almost 2,000 shows, yeah. So the birds were like, ah, whatever, you know. I feel like they take a nap and they come out and they're like, hey, and they go back to sleep, you know. <laughs> yeah, they're, they're doing, you know, shows every night. Yeah, so they're so comfortable and relaxed. So I produced a dove 
And I thought it was a feather. I didn't even think about it until later when they said, what's the egg on stage for? I'm like, what egg? I look, it's a <laughs> tiny egg. It broke. The bird laid an egg. So when I produced it, it came out with the bird and landed on stage. That funny, I, I, bear, I didn't even remember that story. That's funny. That's a good story because like, what egg are you talking about? I mean, you said egg, even now I'm like, I don't do an egg trick in my show. Yeah, yeah, I don't do an egg trick. There's no eggs in my show. But that was a little, you know, how small they are. It's a little egg and the yolk and they see it. Like, what's that egg on the stage for dancers? Cause you know, dancers, they hate yeah. what? A uh, snowstorm, mylar, uh, yeah, yeah. Uh, confetti, water. Cards. You know, cards yeah it, it's hard for them you know I, I understand so that happened and then i think shortly after that i remember get on stage and i do my first opening number no the girls are doing the opening number for this before i start my dub act and i hear them, da, 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 da. i turn around and my feet are going <sighs> on the mild black mylar floor uh marley black Mar marley floor I'm like okay i'm doing my act i hear it talking on the sides What's going on? The floor is like an ice skating rink in the center of the stage. Not thankfully not the whole thing, but most of it around the center. And I'm like, what the hell is going on? Why is it so slippery? You know, we're into it for like a long time. These things keep you on your toes. You know, when you're doing these shows, you think you know it all. You never know it all, right? So Chipper was, I think Chipper was in the show. He says, oh, get some Coke, get some Coke, like Coca-Cola. And then while well, he was out there in the front of the curtain, or I was out doing a piece. They got Coca Cola and they put it on the stage and let it, right. and they stuck. So and it got that sticky. way it had more grip. So then it went from slippery to. <laughs> <laughs> but better than, you know, the girls breaking their necks. Wait, so why was it just so slippery? Because there's just water that kind of froze, or just no. so cold? No. What? My guy, God rest his soul, I don't know, not he's a good kid. He was new. My fault. I told him, do me a favor, the cube zag's getting dusty can you just take some uh, furniture polish and you know and wipe it off and you know wipe it off head to toe top to bottom you know get the hair out of the feet and the leg you know wheels he sprayed it openly instead of in the cloth so it came down onto the stage and that silkiness and that yeah, oil of course on the mylar it was like insane oh my gosh so i learned never clean your props with the spray fluid on a stage where you're performing yeah wow so that was a lesson way into the run too yeah, so like, totally. get through a year into the run i started hiring more people because i was getting tired and burnt out so i hired more people right. so i had to get but you know he didn't know it was my fault yeah 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 but it was the weirdest thing to go out there and like whoa Jesus. <laughs> And I'm wearing boots, you know, back in the day, I wore those like Mastriani boots, you know, with the heel, you know, <laughs> and I'm, like try to balance myself on those boots. So that was a, that was a learning experience. I remember when I was doing my, um, my dub act in a variety show in San Francisco and I was, um, I was act two, but like there was this kind of pre-show act. So kind of act three, but I was the first act on stage because they had this like pre-show kind of thing going on in the audience. And then they have this aerial act that was in the middle rig. And then I was on stage and it was tough because, you know, when you're that early on in the, in the show, it's dependent on what time the show starts. So if I'm not somewhat ready and prepped when the show starts, I'm not going to make it. But if I get all the way prepped and they say, oh, we have to hold five. Oh my gosh, it's awful. So I remember always hating my, my, you know, where I fell in the lineup. I was just yeah, like, because oh, it would be better if show starts, then I go, oh, okay. I know I have 15 minutes. Right. But it was like that's, this. All right, that's a big stress. People don't realize how stressful it is to do a, a live bird act. It's yeah. because it's so, it's so stressful. I remember going even traveling with them and the timing is so important for those because you're yeah. caring about those animals, you know? Yeah. So that definitely is harder than it looks. <laughs> yeah. Sure. yeah. I mean, so I just, I, I just, it was, it was a, an experience. That's for sure. Yes. Always in Argentina one time, right? Here's a double, triple whammy. Check this out. I'm in Argentina. Fantasio brought me out there with, for a show they do out there every year. Yeah. Beautiful theater, but it had a raked floor. That's how old it was. The floor was raked, the old school. What? The stage? 
hey, I never forgot where downstage was or upstage. Yes. Yeah, I play ball downstage because it was always it's on the high. Yeah. yeah. Not high. a lot, but enough, you know. Yeah, enough. So they go, okay, you're on third. You're following the, 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 the comedy act, the clown act. I said, okay. So I'm watching the act. What is he using? Water, rice. So I already taped my wheels down. I taped them so they don't roll my dove cage because, oh, shit, it's like a cruise ship. You got to be careful. Yeah. I go out there and it's like rice and water on a rake <laughs> stage with my Mastriani boots on. <laughs> that was like, and then top it off, he went long and it's humid in Argentina. So you know yeah. what I'm thinking. I'm like this, I can't move. I'm like, <laughs> he goes, I'm watching the act of creating a, a volcano of mess on the stage. And I'm like, it's so stressful, dude. It's so stressful. And then you're sweating. Yeah. Yeah. I'm like, I'm like, woo. And I'm like, minimize my movements. I'm using, you know, my birds. I smuggled my birds in Argentina. You know, back in <laughs> the day when you could do that. Wait, 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 when was this? And, and how did you smuggle them in? I did it. Well, back then it was a lot easier. Right. I always, I, not always, but I put them in a duffel bag and had a little box that I folded flat. It looked like a, a sealed box just for what I went through the x-rays. Right. I put some socks on it and stuff. Then once I got through, I went to the bathroom, I popped it open, it became like a carry cage in the duffel bag. Right. That's what I did. But you're always like, you know, it's like you're smuggling drugs. Like you're always looking over your shoulder, going to the bathroom, so, you know, like. You know, you know Shimada's infamous story. Yeah, when he switched them out. It's, it's yeah. yeah, yeah. <laughs> hey. So, so yeah. Shimada, I don't remember where he was going, but he was. I don't remember where, but he was traveling somewhere internationally, right? And he had his <laughs> he had his doves, and they said you can't bring your birds in into the country. Right. And he's like, yeah. what do you mean? They go, we have to quarantine them. You can't bring these birds. They've in. been in the UK. They're very strict there. Or, yeah, I don't remember or, where. Yeah. And he was saying, well, these are his birds, and the birds were trained. They were trained birds. Right. And he's like, ah, and he didn't know what to do. And so he's like, okay, well, they're going to be here. Can I come back? And they go, you can come back and see them, but you can't enter the country with them. He goes, okay, well, I'll want to check on them. And, you know, they have to have this feed and this and this and that. So he goes into the country. He goes and buys duplicate <laughs> birds <Great story. laughs> these Great white story. doves great story yeah. and he shoves them in his pockets yeah and he says he walks in there to go check on his birds he goes can i check in these are my birds they go yeah yeah go in and so he said he's so nervous he's like okay i'm checking on the birds and then you know one point he's you know walks in and no one's around and he starts switching them all out <laughs> and then he leaves he goes okay they're all good yeah and then he goes, back. he got his birds. That's smart. Hey, you think when you need to think, man, you know. Hey, man, that is, that is the greatest. I love that story. Yeah, That's it's cool. a great story. It's great. Yeah, it's always was a challenge. I learned how to travel without them, though. Yeah. I, I learned, you know, uh, to, to kind of work with birds I never worked with before. I came up with techniques to get them to actually work. Right, right. You know, all humane, no clipping. Never clip the yeah, bird. Right, never right. wear. You know, I use the water underneath the wings to keep them because they get cold. I use those yeah. techniques. I use tiring them out techniques. Right. So you, you kind of manage the birds and understand what has the mentality. Certain birds do certain things. So, right. you know, a handful of times that I had to do that. You know, so it's, it's nerve wracking, though. You know, right. it's nerve wracking. Of course. But, yeah, um, yeah. You know, traveling with birds, you know what I always found and I always did is I mailed them. You did? Through the post office. Oh my God, I know people that do that. I never was, I never did that. And it was fine. It was the easiest, the best ever. You didn't have to fly with them. So what I would do is like, say if I had a gig, I would mail them the morning of, like have to fly somewhere. I'd mail them the morning of my flight, before my flight. They would get there like before me. Wow. It's like when you talk about, you know that's a nice thing yeah. oh my gosh when you talk about or i i know maybe it's the, i'd mail them the day before i mail them the day before my flight yeah. i would fly i would get there and they'd be there waiting for me wow. and it, i i worked with this company that would um they manufactured boxes specifically to mail birds in wow. from a breeder from a, it was a breeder box and that's so great. when you're getting new baby sure. birds and so you can you could uh, buy these 
specific boxes. And now they were really nice cardboard boxes. They had built in this like clear window. So you could just pop this cardboard, look inside. There was air vents all over this thing. Sure. And wow. then not only that, they printed the code, the United States Postal Code that allowed you to ship and mail these birds. So I would do this all the time. Smart, and smart. Yeah, I, and that's all I, I had these boxes and the boxes I could use them a few times, like maybe two, three, four times. And then I'd get new boxes because they wouldn't get that beat up. That's great. Um, and then you put yeah, a sponge with water. Yeah. yeah, you put a sponge with water in there and then the birds are in there. And I was mailing them um, because it's under the postal code of bees, because you can mail bees, like honeybees, through the post. Through the post Keep that in mind, yeah. <laughs> yeah. So um, I remember I would, I would mail them out of over here in Richmond. I would mail them every year for this gig or whatever, right? I had to do this um, on, when I was on tour, because they were with me all tour. And then at the end of the season, I'd mail them back, I'd mail them back. And I, <laughs> I, I went to mail them and I have them in the box and this person's like, oh, uh, no, we can't take these. And I go, yeah, yeah, you can. I, I mail them, uh, you know, every year and right. they come in this box with us. He goes, no, 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 we, I have to, you know, I have to check. Um, and I'm like, well, the, the, the postal code is right. And she goes, no, no, no. And she gets out this book. And when I tell it's this book, it's like old Bible. and dusty. Yeah. <laughs> Oof. She's looking through the postal code book of whatever, searching around. And I'm like, oh, it's actually, I'm trying to explain to this lady that it's, this is the code on the box. And she just was like, sir, please let me do this. And I'm like, yeah. but she's right. going through it, going through it. And she can't find a thing. And finally she goes to her supervisor. Her supervisor's doing something, you know? And I'm like, I do this, I, let me help you. Let me, and I'm just give up. And she asked her supervisor, she goes, hey, you know, can, can we mail doves here, birds? And the lady, without even looking up, she goes, yeah, we mail doves, usually about once a year this time. And I look at her, I go, that's me, mail these. <laughs> and so the lady goes, oh. And then I said, look at, this is the code. And like at that point, then she listened to me, go, look at, the, here it is right here in the box. And she goes, oh, this is the code. And so... It was this whole thing. She goes, I don't know if we do this. I go, yeah. Yeah, you never, it's always, you don't know who you're running into. Oh, yeah. That's the thing. But it's, you know what? That's the real work, man. That's the real, not as easy as it looks when you're on stage. Okay. It's the easiest thing. When you're right, when you're, when you're sitting on stage and you're starting to perform. Easy. You're, now you're ready to roll. I say, everything is done. It's the most relaxing time. Yeah. That's, your feet. That's why we, it's hard to not do it because it's like really the most relaxing time. Yeah. <sighs> You're in your element. Oh, here we go. I worked hard. I'm doing my stuff now. Bang. Hey, one last one last question and story. If you could say anything about when you did your, um, and I think it's really one of the best escapes. I love it. Is your uh, speeding car escape? Any problems you run into that one? Like uh, which one? The one on NBC or the one I did for in up in Tahoe? I like the version in Tahoe better than the version. Yeah, in they wouldn't do it that way for TV. They were actually afraid of it. When I sent that video in, and I did that specifically to get on that show, because I was in Tahoe for years, and like nobody saw me up there, because it's kind of secluded, you know. Yeah. So I said, I gotta do this thing. I had this idea. I want to do this idea. So I hired like six camera people. I spent like you know six, seven grand just to do it back then. This is like a long time ago, twenty seven yeah. years ago. But I said, I gotta do this, you know. So that was good, but they were so afraid of it because they saw how close it was. They would not allow me to be that close or uh, out of sight. They wanted me to be in sight. They right. didn't like me out of sight because if something happened, they don't know what I did. They wanted, I guess, the legal team. I don't know. We got to see them at all times. So that's why we changed it for NBC. It was, it was okay. It was fine. You know, but the real one was good. That was, that was a tough one. I mean, that literally consumed me for three months to prepare for that. Right. Um, I was so driven by getting on that show. It's weird how when you put that much effort into something and it happens, but there's a cost to it. I, I risked my life. Um, when I saw the video, when the guy called me after I did the thing, you know, he called me up, the guy editing, he said, Tony, you got to come over. Uh, the video's done, but you were really close. Said, oh yeah, I know it's close. No, no, really close, but you have to come here so I can explain it to you. Okay. So he shows me slow motion second by second. When I'm out, it's on YouTube. Yeah. When, so I'm jumping out of the box. 
the car comes in and I'm still, I haven't landed yet. And I'm not off, off the ground that high. I'm just jumping off the ground, maybe this, you know, maybe a foot and a half, just diving through the box. The car went through the box before I even landed. He says it was a tenth of a second. Wow. One frame more and it would have clipped you and your legs, you would have went. The box. Because, so, so what the escape was is you were, in, you were chained and shackled in a box. With a straight jacket. With a straight jacket. And, and then straight a, shot. Car, a car with spikes and things on it would come running, would come yeah. driving through, and you yeah. had a certain amount of time to jump out before it completely destroyed Yeah, the I had an outer box that was paper that covered the work and had pyro on it, pyrotechnics. It's on YouTube. If you look under Tony Clark Car Escape, I think it comes up. Um, and, uh, yeah, so that was it. So I had to get out. But what happened was the day, that morning, as I'm prepping, you know, now I'm thinking, imagine how nervous I am. Poor guy I had driving. I couldn't get a real driver to do it. Nobody would do it. I, I tried to hire a stock, stock car driver from Reno. They had a stock car racing track down there. Once they heard it, they all, they didn't want to do it. Wow. So I had to get my guy to do it. I put these bars on the windshield. I bought an old car with a bad piston. Ta -ta 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 -ta. Actually worked out better. The sound was actually good. <laughs> but, it, you know, I never checked the brakes. I never checked the steering. Uh, you know, it was just weird so i'm getting ready the box putting paper on the box the outside we use butcher paper heavy paper but now it's windy up there that day <sighs> paper's like almost tearing oh, shit. i said guys put another layer of paper just to be safe that way if it rips it won't show through well that's nice but when you double paper it gets a lot thicker and harder to put punch through which i didn't think about because i'm punching out the right side of the box and what i did normally is i i put little razor blade cuts to make it perforate, you know, I forgot to do that. But I didn't think about it. So I'm down, I'm looking, and I'm out, I'm safe. I'm, I, I think I'm safe. So I'm ready. So I, I'm looking, I have a peak hole, right? I'm ready to jump and I go, and the first time it doesn't break through, like I rehearsed it. So I had to do it twice. That's why it was so close. So I went bang, and it, if you look, it ripped across the top of the box. And then I went through, but I was like in nervous energy. I was like, oh. it was literally that much. It was like, Whoa. bang, bang. And then I went and you see it was like a cat. I was like, boom, extended. I could never do that again if I wanted to. Wow. But the, I didn't think about any of that until I saw the video and he showed me how close it was. And one camera guy was like, boy, the back of the box and the car was coming this way. And the, the lid, it would have decapitated him. It flew over his head. I, I, I don't think I used that shot, but the camera guy, the, the lid, flew off like this when the car hit it and went over the guy's head. I mean, that could have been catastrophic for that guy. So, <laughs> long, so, yeah. long, so I didn't have nightmares before it. I had nightmares after for a long time. I still occasionally have a little weird uh, feel. I might think of it tonight now. I don't talk about it, but I don't watch it anymore. I don't watch it on YouTube anymore. Um, because it was so uh, like, wow, I risked my life to yeah. do this stupid thing. Totally. Now, that's smart. You know, that, it, it was something I didn't plan on and I only did it once. That's the danger of these things. I could have been, a, you know, I, it literally messed me up for a, a while. It really messed me up. Yeah. Uh, so don't do dangerous stuff if you don't have to, if, unless you have three safeties, like your water, at least you have people on stage with you yeah, yeah. and you're seeing them. That's the difference. Yeah. Nobody saw me inside. That was the problem. Yeah. That's why NBC didn't want me to be in a box. They saw this go, holy shit, this is like, they saw it. They go, that was close. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. So that was being stupid, you know. Um, and then it, it, it was a, it was a crazy, crazy. Yeah. Watch the video. It's pretty insane. It's it, totally real and insane. Yeah. I I um I and you. It's on here. I'll put it on there. Okay. That's because I know when I saw it. But okay. I mean, yeah. It's it was um one of my. <laughs> One of my favorite escapes because it really is intense. Because you just go, "This is in what? This yeah. is crazy!" You right. know, the car, this car's barreling down this driveway, you know, right at you. And and it's funny that you're saying, and I remember you telling me that no one wanted to drive it, no one wanted to do it, and you had to like tell your guy, and he's just like, "Okay, you're like, just it's all right, it's good, go." And he's just yeah. like, "Ah." Oh. Yeah, we rehearsed it. We put him in. I put him in a helmet. I did the most I can. Put bars in the front in case something goes through the windshield. But also, it also depends on his speed too. Right. I mean, there's those right. variables too in the car. Oh, yeah. Maybe he's going a little bit faster than normal. Yeah. What if, you know? And it was downhill, a little bit of a downhill in the parking lot. We we rehearsed it that a lot. Like he would go to the side. Like he would swipe. Like I'd be here, 
no box, just practicing my timing, realized I was in a straight jacket and then 30 feet of chain wrapped around that. Right. I mean, we get out of it, obviously. Yeah, get out. But yeah, but still. It's a lot going on with the chain, you know, inside of a box. You're down, I'm laying down in the straight jacket, but still you're in a confined box. So it, it yeah, it's pretty nuts. People crying in the audience. I mean, I hit my head, I scraped my head. That was a little bit like they saw the blood, they called in, the, they called the paramedics and they saw blood on my head. Because my head hit the wood, the top bar of the wood. Because it literally hit the paper and it slid up. And that's what I'm you see. Watch this right after this, man. Yeah, watch, watch the paper where it tear, tears across the top. And it was supposed to punch through the middle. Nice and beautiful pow. <laughs> Boom, and ripped. And then my head just caught the wood a little bit. They didn't know how bad it was. They were freaked out. Yeah. Well, the paramedic had paramedics. You know, I did it right, at least for that. I had paramedics, I had firemen, you know, safety. But they wouldn't let me do it anyway. The casino, they like, you know. I don't even know how they let me do it. I think I lied that I had insurance. I don't know. <laughs> I can't remember because that was an issue. I think, no, I think I had to get a policy. You know what? Policy. You know what? It's funny because when you think about things like that, you know, it's like, imagine trying to do that again today. Yeah, right. There's just certain things that you just, you're like, no. I would never do it. I would never, never do be it. able to do this again. Yeah. There's yeah. like, no, nope, can't do that. Like even look at Copperfield and the Statue of Liberty. Yeah. There's no way anybody that these days. And he actually talks about that. Yeah, I remember some interview of him talking about it. He said, he goes, you know, I had to get presidential pardon. Like it was like Reagan or somebody that was really. Like, oh yeah, because only like five people have ever been up in the flame or something. Like it's like nobody's there. And here's this magician that whatever. And and he kind of talks about it. He goes, you know, he had to get the president approval. Like the president absolutely oh, wow. said Copfield can do the stunt on Jeez. this thing because people were saying, no way, no way, no way. And so he just was like, I have to do this, have to do this. And, um, but uh, yeah, I mean, no one yeah. can do that now. I Please mean, don't, yeah, don't try anything remotely close to this yeah. ever. Yeah. It's not good. <laughs> nah. I got on the TV show, big deal. I get, you know, whatever. It was fine. It was exciting at the time. But yeah. looking back, I'm like, mm, not sure if it was worth it. <laughs> <Not sure. laughs> think of a different way to, different different thing to do right yeah 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 you can do something else but anyway hey man thanks for the time i appreciate it hey, so good stuff. to see you you look good yeah Stay well i'm people i get people talking to me now saying you know we don't know what to do it's hard to get motivated you know this and that i say well look we don't know what the future holds exactly so we can't really control that at the moment the only thing we control is not going backwards right so you can't go forward right now, which we understand, out of our control, but don't go backwards. So don't do stuff to, that's not healthy. Uh, just keep your mind going, creating, writing ideas. Use this time for that.